Your Grace, Reverend Fathers, dear friends, honored guests, welcome. And thank you very much for making the time to be here tonight. Uh, my most sincere thanks to the Maliotis Cultural Center's Executive Director, Crisula Kukundi, and Associate Director, Markella Patitsas, for their tremendous generosity, hospitality, and collegiality in organizing and hosting tonight's event, as well as Monday evening's lecture by our Music Director, Alexander Lingus. We could not have asked for more gracious collaborators, and we are grateful. We look forward to working together more in the future. I must also express my gratitude to Father Romanos Caranos, Professor of Byzantine Music at Holy Cross, for his support. When I first suggested to him that we might look at doing a book launch event here, he was immediately enthusiastic and pledged to do whatever he could. I must also acknowledge the substantial efforts and generous support of a number of individuals and institutions in making everything leading up to and including tonight possible. Maria Boyer, Jeffrey and Edith Gowan, the International Society for Orthodox Church Music, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the Endowment Fund of Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Portland, Oregon, the St. John Kukuzelis Institute of Liturgical Arts, and the St. John of Damascus Society. Please join me in acknowledging them. In 2006, I was taking what could be called, generously, baby steps into the world of Byzantine chant. Good quality Anglophone resources were few and far between, and access to knowledgeable individuals was sparse at best. Wishing to know better the landscape I was but tentatively beginning to tread upon, I asked my friend Mark Powell, Executive Director of Capella Romana, if he had any advice. Get in touch with John Michael Boyer, he, Mark told me. He's a great cantor, a wonderful teacher, and he's working on an English language curriculum that is going to be terrific. Life being what it was, I didn't actually email John until 2008. He very generously sent me a PDF, that I still have, of roughly the first three lessons of a book he said he was working on, saying that he expected to complete the book soon. As J.R.R. Tolkien said of his writing process for Lord of the Rings, the tale grew in the telling. Since that initial communication, I've had, if not quite a front row seat to the development of John's book, at least orchestra level in the rear third or so of the seating chart. And I've become acutely aware that John hasn't just been writing a textbook. If only it were that simple. The vision John has had for the book has meant that he has been simultaneously forging a path and drawing the map. And it has taken time to do it right. Tonight, 15 years after John sent me that first PDF, I am beyond thrilled as Capello Romana's Director of Publications to welcome you to the launch of Byzantine Chant, The Received Tradition, a lesson book. I have spent much of the, of the last nearly two years working with John on the book's completion and printing, and it's been a tremendous blessing. I've read the finished product cover to cover multiple times now, and I'm truly proud of what he's accomplished. If you have any interest in Byzantine music from any angle, this book is for you. Notation, theory, history, style, manuscripts, bibliography, what have you. It is exactly the book I wished I'd had back in 2006. I believe it will be of great help to students now, and it will continue to be an invaluable resource for years to come. It has been worth the wait in every respect, and I'm overjoyed that we can all come together here, a cultural center for the Greek Orthodox Church in the United States generally, and one of the principal centers of Byzantine music activity and education in this country more specifically, and celebrate John's success with him. John, Sincharitiria, bravo, congratulations. Dear friends, uh, good afternoon, as it is here, or good morning or good evening, depending on uh, where you are in the world. Uh, I am delighted to be able to um, talk to you today about the publication of Byzantine Chant, uh, the Received Tradition, a lesson book by Protopsaltis John Michael Boyer. 
uh, this publication, which has been uh, years in preparation, uh, because these kinds of these kinds of um, publications are not things that appear fully formed overnight. They are the product of a lifetime's work. Is a distillation of the work in uh, chanting, transcribing, and teaching Byzantine chant that John has undertaken over the years. It is in the English language itself uh, a remarkable thing. There have been publications, uh, primers in Byzantine chant in the English language before, but none as comprehensive as this, which will take you from the basics to uh, the very most refined areas of modal theory and how to apply these things to what you are singing on the chant stand. Uh, it is a great pleasure on behalf of ISOCM, the International Society for Orthodox Church Music, of which I am chairman, to have participated in a, a modest way in, in, in this publication, but um, in particular to be able to lend it our support as a society. And um, though the book is in English, I do believe that it can serve as a model for those wishing to sing Byzantine chant in languages other than Greek throughout the world. And it is uh, a comprehensive and, I may say, comprehensible set of lessons from which, if you follow it properly, you can learn to chant um, according to the experience of Protopsaltis, John Michael Boyer. So I would encourage you to buy this beautifully presented book, uh, which has been um, carefully prepared and uh, printed by uh, Capella Romana. And to extend the range of uh, the Byzantine chant tradition beyond the Greek speaking world and to spread its manifold um, joys and its depths and riches to those who wish to chant in other languages. Congratulations, John. Congratulations, Capella. Congratulations to anyone who buys this remarkable volume because you will have bought a treasure. Thank you. Your Grace, Bishop John, Reverend Fathers, esteemed academics, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of His Eminence Metropolitan Methodius of Boston, who asked me to represent him tonight, and of the entire Hellenic College Holy Cross community, I am honored and delighted to be present at what my mentor in musicology, Professor Emeritus Grigorios Stathis of the University of Athens, would call a Kalitechnico ke epistemoniko gegonos ipsistis simasias, an auspicious artistic and academic event. Perhaps more significantly, the launch of John Michael Boyer's Byzantine chant, The Received Tradition, is a milestone in the history of the church in America. In the last 20 years, original musical settings and adaptations of Greek original compositions by several composers, such as John Michael Boyer himself, Gabriel Cremins, Father Seraphim Diris, Samuel Heron, Nicholas Rumas, Georgios Sodoridis, to name a few, have begun to abound. We are now at a critical juncture in the history of liturgical music in the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. High quality Byzantine settings of liturgical texts in English are no longer an oddity, but rather gradually becoming the norm. And yet, until this very moment, there was something missing. Having been a professor of ecclesiastical music and director of the Byzantine music program here at Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology for over a decade, I have been asked time and again by the more inquisitive student, what does this martyricon simeon mean? Why do we need it? What do you mean that's an alpha? It looks like a Q to me. Why do we need both the gorthmikon and the palastikon and who came up with these names? <laughs> Why are the martyria for the diatonic and harmonic genera basically the same? Is there a book where all this theory is clearly laid out? In my usual response has been, well, yes, sure, there are some excellent books, Stylinika, in Greek, much to the disappointment of the student. 
now I am happy to be able to give a more, a much more satisfactory answer to this type of question. Finally, we have a publication with extensive and thorough explanations of the notational system and of the overall theory and practice of the Celtic art. Byzantine chant, the received tradition, is a comprehensive primer into the new method of analytical notation, which was established in Constantinople in 1814. In one sense, the book is not original. In fact, originality is generally not prized in the cantorial world. On the contrary, it is often frowned upon. John follows in the footsteps of his teacher's teacher, Simon Caras, and Dr. Georgios Constantinou, and he takes advantage of the findings of recent musicological research. What is original in the book is the fact that, first of all, it is the first one of its kind in English, and the clarity of explanations of even minute points that are usually glossed over by most teachers of the Celtic art. Moreover, the author offers an original method of presenting the material that, to my knowledge, has not yet been sufficiently explored in the English-speaking world, rather than supply endless sets of tedious and largely unhelpful exercises, he introduces excerpts from the established repertoire in both Greek and English early on. This increases the student's appetite for more and quickly familiarizes him or her with the basic thesis or melodic formulae. Yanni, when you were here, when you were a student here at Holy Cross, you used to tell me, Teliono, Teliono, Punana, I'm close to finishing the book. In fact, I think when you first came to Holy Cross, you, you said that one of your goals is, along with the MDiv, to finish the book in these three or four years, right? It took a, little, a bit longer than that, but here it is, and we in the Holy Cross community are all extremely proud of your major accomplishment. Sikharitiria. <laughs>